Hello, Dr. James Bogash, expert in health and longevity, and I found this particular study very interesting in its effectiveness, simplicity, and cost. And quite frankly, it's not something that I typically recommend, but it really should be like across the board. And this it has to do with the use of a nasal spray. The study compared a simple saline spray, which low cost, no real downsides, to a gel-based nasal um, spray, which was still effective, we'll talk about that, and then to usual care, which involved not using a nasal spray. So this was a study, uh, people, a couple different metrics. It was self-reported illness. So basically, you know, it wasn't uh, going in and getting a temperature and diagnosing everything. It was the patient's self-reporting illness. So take that for what it is. Uh, they followed them for six months, almost 14,000 people. So this was a big study to get that all organized and, and the nasal sprays in the hands of the people that needed them. The average age was about 61 to 62 years of age. So this is definitely an age group that we need to protect them from. And basically, and they were also high risk people. So people with um, obesity, with um, immune deficiencies, with cardiovascular disease, with asthma, uh, people we really need to protect at an age we probably need to be considering protecting them. So really anything that has an impact is potentially of value so long as it's safe and low cost. And um, what happened in the study was at the first sign of illness, so either you had some illness or or the, the participant had felt ill or they were exposed, whether real exposed, like, wow, I was around my cousin's house and everybody was sick, or a potential exposure, so around somebody who might have been sick but wasn't confirmed. And they were told to just do the usual care, which didn't involve the nasal sprays, or they did the, the saline nasal spray or the gel nasal spray. And the advice was up to six times per day. Most people didn't do it six times per day, but when they found that people did it more, it was more beneficial. So what did they find? Um, there was about an 18% reduction in lost work days. So the usual group lost, over the course of six months, lost 15 days of work. 12 with the gel and 11.2 with the saline. So really pretty even with the gel versus the saline. Uh, decreased antibiotic use, which is fantastic. I've certainly been very vocal about the overuse of antibiotics and how much it destroys the microbiome and sets you up for the next infection. So if we're not using it, we probably would find if we extended the study out from six months to a year or two or three, we'd probably see some durable benefits in the nasal spray group. Uh, and in general, the gel group had a little bit more sinus effects, si uh, side effects, sinus pressure. It, the gel that they used in the study had some chemicals in it. Like We really don't want to be injecting that up in our nose. So given that the saline had comparable effects with less side effects and it's going to be a lower cost, it's really a no-brainer to keep this in the um, medicine cabinet right next to your vitamins. And at the first sign of illness or if you've been exposed, maybe people, you, plane travel, large groups, whatever, maybe it's time to just keep those nasal passages moist to our, allow our own immune system to do its job. But again, just the cost and the safety and just it, this is another one of those no-brainer interventions that can make a lot of sense. As always, I'll post a link to this particular study in the description. Make sure you like this video, share it with somebody who you think needs the information, and subscribe to the channel.